everyone welcome to our youtube channel once more so today we are going to be solving northwest mark 2022 for that maths particularly kev sketching so that's a problem suggested to us by this as student right here in front of your screens all right so let's go over and dive right into the problem Okay, so our problem reads, um, a revalued function is given by f of x equals lindat. Roman 1 says, find the domain of f. Roman 2 goes, evaluate the one-sided limit of f at the boundaries of its domain. Hence, state the equations of the three asymptotes of the curve y equals f of x. Find the coordinates of the points where the graph crosses the coordinate axis. Find f prime of x and explain why the graph y equals f of x has no turning point find f double prime of x and explain why the graph has no point of inflection determine the intervals in the domain of f for which the graph is concave up or down determine the center of symmetry of the curve y equals f of x and finally sketch the curve y equals f of x all right guys so let's dive right into the solution the first part is find the domain of f so to get the domain of this function basically it's a logarithmic function you want this guy to be strictly greater than zero so um, we have 2x minus 6 over x minus 1 to be strictly greater than 0. We solve this inequality and we have the solution set x less than 1, you know, x greater than 3. Um, this solution set becomes the domain of this function. Now there's one more twist in the story of getting the domain. Um, this is actually a rational function here. So you don't want the denominator of this rational function to be 0. So of course, x minus 1 should never be 0 which means that x should never be 1. But then the solution set of this inequality already takes care of that because it says x should be strictly less than 1. So it does not involve 1 in its, in its um, solution set. So this solution set definitely just becomes our domain. So our domain of f is just x belongs to the set from negative infinity all the way to this 1 union from 3 now all the way to positive infinity. That's the way you give it in further math. So let's head on. Let's look at the next part of the question. Evaluate the one-sided limit of f at the boundaries of its domain. Hence, state the equations of the three asymptotes of the curve y equals f of x. So that, that's our domain. What we really want to do is want to look for limits first and foremost as x tends to infinity, right? These very extremes of the domain. So we have this uh, function. We can undergo partial fractions. We can, of course, break this function down with partial fractions, and it becomes two minus that. And then limit as x tends to infinity of all of these things is zero. So we're basically left with lin2 as x tends to infinity. So you realize that y equals lin2 is just a horizontal asymptote, right? So whenever you look for the limit as x tends to infinity or that plus or minus, the result you have if it's just a constant, then that becomes a horizontal asymptote, right? So um, we can go over and then look for the one-sided limit as x tends to 1. I've chosen to take it from below because the function exists around 1 here, right? So the function only exists to the left of one, not to the right of one, right? So I, I, the one-sided limit I've, I've chosen here is just to the left. So again, if you study that, it's just positive infinity. So that tells you that x equals one is a vertical asymptote. Now, I'm just going to give you a, a general way of testing whether a particular point of um, x equals a, particular vertical line, x equals a, is a vertical asymptote. So what you want to do is that you want to just find out if um, the limit as x tends to a either from above or from below or just that two-sided limit is infinity any one of those conditions if it's fulfilled then x equals a is a vertical asymptote so right here i've taken the one-sided limit from below and then it's infinity so x equals one is our vertical asymptote so we can go over to three here now from three here i'll take it from above because the function does not exist to the left of three right so the one-sided limit here i've taken it from above again you put that in here you have negative infinity again you just want to take a number that's slightly bigger than three for instance 3.1 right and then you put in here and then you simplify and then you take lean of that again it gives you a negative number it tells you that that's negative infinity are we there so we can go over and then say that the equations of uh, the asymptote to this curve are basically y equals lean two this one x equals um one and x equals three so we can go over to the next so our next part of the problem says that find the coordinates of the points where the graph crosses the coordinate axis. Okay, this, this one is very straightforward. So this is our function. To get where it creates, for instance, the y-axis, basically, x is 0 at that point, right? <laughs> Good. And where it wants to get, or where it gets the x-axis, y becomes 0. Perfect. So assume curve gets the x-axis at a, so at a y is 0 so make this our y here 0 and then we of course and then we simplify our x is basically 5 so the point a is basically 5 comma 0 
then um, now assume the curve cuts the y-axis at b at b of course x is zero so we want to simplify and then our y is lean six so our, our coordinate of b is basically zero comma six that one is straightforward easy peasy lemon squeezy we go over to the next part of the problem Find f prime of x and explain why the graph y equals f of x has no turning point. So our f of x is that we just want to break down this f of x a bit because lin a over b is same as lin a minus lin b. So I can write f of x as that, and then I differentiate. Then I will be differentiating each of these guys. But to differentiate the logarithmic function, basically what you're doing is you differentiate the function divided by the function itself. So the derivative of this guy is just two divided by the guy is two x minus six. Okay, the derivative of this guy is just one, so we have minus one there because it was negative divided by the function itself. So we want to unify that guy. I want that again. Two is common here, so we can just factor out all two it cancels with this guy. So we have one over x minus three. And we unify that by looking for the LCM, and then we have this, and then we have that again. We can equate this guy now to zero. You realize that there's no real value of x of which f prime of x is zero, hence f of x has no turning point. All right, so the next part is find f double prime of x and explain why the graph has no point of inflection. So our f of x is this, our f prime of x is that, our f double prime of x therefore will just be bottom z top, which gives you the top is just a constant, so z top is zero, minus top z bottom, so that's why I've said minus two, derivative of this bottom will just be two x minus four, all that about the bottom squared. Oh, sorry, I did not square that, so um, you are supposed to you're supposed to square this like this square this all that raised to the power two like that good so we can move on and then we have of course you realize that if you equate that thing to zero your x is just two but then this x equals two is not in the domain of f because remember that the domain says that x lies from comes from negative infinity all the way to one and then skips every other value but takes takes on values from three all the way to positive infinity so because this x is not x equals two is not in the domain of our function it means that that function has no point of inflection right so we go on so the next part of the question says that determine the interval in the domain of f for which the graph is concave up or down and this is our domain here so we basically have x less than one or x greater than three now the, the aspect of concavity of functions of a, a particular interval let's say i is very interesting because um you make use of the second derivative a lot right you make use of the second derivative much more than a common calculus student would be would be making use use of so you, you want to you want to verify that the second derivative is actually greater than zero over a particular interval and then you just conclude that um, the graph is concave up on that particular interval and if the graph tends to be concave down then the second derivative on that particular interval where it's concave down is basically just less than zero right so we we go ahead and solve the problem again to to tell you how your, the, your graph is going to look like when we are linking these concavity things to our 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 statements in calculus basically when you're dealing with um maybe converging lenses right if you place your converging lens on the table and then you look from above you realize that the the, the lens actually bulges upwards right so because it bulges upwards it means that that converging lens is said to be convex up because it's convex up it is therefore concave down now if you place your concave lens on top of a table and then you look from above right and then you realize that the surface actually bulges inward for your concave lens because it bulges inward and it's concave right it bulges inward as you look from above then the graph is said to be concave up right i'm just trying to give you clues on how to you know just understand these concave things all right so we we go over to say let's get the first interval x less than one and then we get our f double prime of x that is it let's get a number in this interval let's say zero because zero is less than one and then we place in here you realize that f double prime of zero is eight over three which is positive that tells you that the graph on this particular interval of the domain is actually concave up because it's positive right so again that's a definition there so we have for the second um, part of the domain x greater than three 
you realize that our f double prime of 4, which is just a number in this particular interval, is negative 8 over 11. So because the, that answer is negative, the graph is said to be concave down, right? Perfect. So that is the concept of concavity. So we go on to the next part of the question. All right, guys. So the next part of the question says that uh, determine the center of symmetry of the curve y equals 0 of x. Okay, so the concept of center of symmetry, um, okay, for instance, if you have an odd function, right, um, every odd function is symmetrical about the origin. Now, uh, we can extend that concept a bit by looking at uh, the example y equals 1 over x as our function. You realize that that function is actually bounded by the asymptote x equals 0 and y equals 0. Now, where those two asymptotes they intersect, which is at the point 0, 0, basically defines for you the point of symmetry. So we can extend the concept of point of symmetry to including the intersection of two asymptotes that, that bound the function, right? So um, if I have an oblique asymptote together with a vertical asymptote, where those intersect, that point where they intersect basically is equal to my point of symmetry. That's GC 2018. Now, um, but we, we, we've, we've not seen uh, cases where you have a single horizontal asymptote intersecting two vertical asymptotes. That's why we love not West marks. Now, what we are going to do here is that uh, our vertical asymptotes, we know them, the, the, point, the, the lines x equals to 1 and the line x equals to 3. And then we have uh, y equals lean 2 as our horizontal asymptote. So where this horizontal asymptote intersects these two vertical lines will basically be the point we coordinate 1 comma lean 2, 3 comma lean 2. Now to get the point of symmetry of this particular curve, it would be simply the midpoint, right, of these two points of intersections of our two vertical asymptotes and a single horizontal asymptote. So the midpoint between those points of intersection of our asymptotes basically is our point of symmetry, right? So either directly the point where the asymptotes intersect is our point of symmetry, if there are only two asymptotes, or the midpoint between the points of intersection of our asymptotes, if there are more than two, right? Becomes our point of symmetry. All right, so our point of symmetry, therefore, because the midpoint of these two points will basically be two comma lean two, right? So we have that as our center of um symmetry all right so to sketch our function you basically what you really want to do is or of course is your y and x axis and you want to indicate your asymptotes very first thing so your vertical asymptotes here and your horizontal asymptotes and then uh, you next thing you want to do is the points right the point where the curve gets the coordinated axis so these are our points and then you now want to sketch that graph using um of course guides guides such as the limit as x tends to um infinity which will just be this y equals lean 2 so as x increases to infinity our function will be collapsing along the line y equals lean 2 and again and as x tends to negative infinity our function will be collapsing along this line y equals lean 2 so um limit as x tends to 1 from below remember that was positive infinity it means our graph increases to positive infinity like that and then uh, again remember that limit as x tends to 3 from below or from above sorry was negative infinity so our graph falls from the line y equals lean 2 all the way down to this so uh, really sketching the graph is really not a problem um that is the end of our video guys i hope you enjoyed it and if you want us to do more videos on a particular chapter and for that much you don't understand please leave the chapter in the comment section below share the link to your friends thank you so much for supporting us Please smash the like buttons, you know, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much for supporting us. Stay fine.